All right, this is a recording for binomial distributions. So let me, once again, let me get back past all of this. All right. And we're going to begin with section 11.5, which is the binomial distribution itself. And so we're going to begin with the binomial coefficient. The binomial coefficient always precedes the formula. So it literally um, is the formula that we use for combinations. It looks like this. We have n r, and then this n r is equivalent to n prime over r prime times n minus r prime. If you ever remember doing combinations permutations, this is the formula for combinations. And so we can also evaluate this using the calculator. There is an actual function. Um, in example one, they're asking us a very simple question. They're giving us an opportunity to evaluate. And that's literally the question stem. It just says evaluate. And then this is all they give us. So for part A, this is all they're going to give us is the 6, 2. And so the 6 is n, and the r is 2. So we would begin with 6 prime divided by 2 prime over 6 minus 2 prime. It's actually very easy to do. If you recall the prime factorization, this would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And all of this is divided by 2 prime, hence 2 times 1. That's the 2 prime. 6 minus 2 is 4, so this is really 4 prime. So this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then now we start to cancel everything that is duplicated. So 4, 3, 2, 1 cancels with 4, 3, 2, 1. And now we're left with 2 times 1 over 6 times 5. So remember, 2 goes into 6 3 times. And 3 times 5 will give us a final answer of 15. It goes back to uh, Pascal's triangle, if you recall. Uh, Pascal's triangle, where we start with um, coefficient of 1, which is the result of a plus b to the 0 power. The coefficients of a plus b to the 1 power are 1 and 1. That's a plus b to the first power. In other words, this becomes 1a plus b, 1b. If I have a plus b squared, second power, now remember that the, the factorization for this is 1a squared plus twice ab plus 1b squared. So you notice the coefficients 1, 2, 1. Here they are, 1, to one and so it starts to create this little cone like almost like a beehive uh, cone where this will become for the power of three one three three one those are the coefficients so this would be an a plus b to the third power and so this will become one a cubed Technically, it's b to the 0 power. I didn't write the b to the 0 power up here. Just know that it's there. And here is an a to the 0 power. And so what happens is this becomes plus 3a to the 2b to the 1 plus 3ab to the 2. And then lastly, plus 1a to the 0. And now b is to the 3rd. And so it continues 
this continues all the way through uh, a to the fourth, a to the fifth, a plus b to the fourth, a plus b to the fifth, a plus b to the sixth, all the way infinitely. And so, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to do dot, 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 because I could be here forever. Now, the reason why we want to know this is because this coefficient that we just obtained here, this 15, actually is found in the sixth power. So actually, you know what, to model it, let me go ahead and continue. So let me erase here for a minute since I'm talking to you about this right now. And you'll see the big picture. So that's a plus b to the third, a plus b to the fourth, one, four, six, four, one. Always end in one, always start with one. a to the fifth, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Here comes a plus b to the sixth. One, six, look at that, fifteen, twenty, look at that again, fifteen, six and one this is the a plus b to the sixth power the point being with this example this is um six prime and so what this is telling me if the that if i have six r um i'm looking at in this case this 15 in particular that's a coefficient that i'm focusing on so it helps you find the coefficient of the actual value. So go ahead, if you want to try these, we can also do this with technology. We could talk about the technology because that's also good to know. Depending on your calculator. <coughs> and so some of these become very high numbers. Obviously as this grows, the, the, the cone grows. I should say, as the triangle grows, so does the, the coefficient values. So if you'd like to evaluate those uh, quickly, I'll give you a minute or so, and I'll give you the results. This is equal to 1, by the way. That's this value right here. This is, is going to give you 84 coefficient 84 and this is going to give you a coefficient of 1 so that's actually this one okay so in a binomial theorem the way this works and um, I think I did show you the pattern already um, they basically are telling you that if I'm expanding a binomial with numbers, so I showed you the expansion here with, um, I, I mean, I went as far as uh, a plus b to the third. Um, and so look at the coefficients of, of the fourth power, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay, and so the reason I want to talk to you about that next is because example two asks us to simply expand x plus two. Notice this is not a plus b. This is x plus two to the fourth power. And so accuracy here is imperative. And so I've made sure that I've drank my pint of coffee <laughs> for mental clarity. And here we go. Here's the first term. So we know that our coefficients, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, we know that these are our coefficients. And I got those from Pascal's triangle. What you'd want to do is, in theory, if I'm expanding this, this is my A term, this is my B term. If you recall what I said to you initially is you set this up with the first term 4, 0, which is the leading coefficient. The x brings this to the fourth power, and this is times 2 to the 0 power. The second term, the 4, is really nothing more than 4, 1, which is the second value in the coefficient. 
this becomes x to the third, and this is times two to the one power. Do you notice that the four is, or, or the x is decreasing its power, four, three, two, one, and so on? The, the two is actually increasing. So the x will decrease from four, three, two, one, the, the two is actually increasing zero, one, two, three. Okay, so the middle term. The middle term is R6, which is 4, 2 coefficient. Uh, the X is now, remember this is multiplied times respectively. This is X now to the second power times 2 to the second power. Plus, all right, we repeat the process now. This is going to 4, 3, which is our 4 coefficient times x to the 1 power times 2 to the 3rd power. And our last term, plus, this will be 4, 4. And this is times x to the 0 power, which is 1, times 2 to the 4th power. And the only reason I'm using uh, some of the notation, like x to the 0, 2 to the 0, normally we don't even write that. I just want you to see what it is. Okay, and so as we collapse this, obviously this becomes x to the fourth. This becomes 4x cubed times 2. Remember, these are all being added. And this is 6x squared times 4. Obviously, we can simplify that further, and we will. This is 4x times 8. And the last term is uh, 1 times basically 2 to the 4th. So I'm just going to write 2 to the 4th, which is 16. I can actually write the 16 instead. So I'll just go ahead and do 16. The last thing we do is we clean it up. That means that we multiply, for example, 4 times 2 and 6 times 4 and so on. So our final answer will be x to the 4th power plus 8x cubed plus 24x squared plus 32x plus 16. Final answer. So I'd like for you to try one. Let's have you try one where we have all the steps and I would like for you to do something simple like x plus let's go with x plus 1 to the fourth power and I'm gonna have you expand it just like I did it here in the three lines okay so take your time I'll give you a couple of minutes I'll pause the video and go from there but when this is said and done your expansion your final answer should look like x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. All right, let me go ahead and do example 3. There's not very many examples in this section, but they are lengthy. Another expand question, this time they give us two variables. And so in this case, they're giving us 2x minus y to the fifth power. So here's the beauty of it. If you know that the fourth power is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, then you already know that the up and coming fifth power is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And so we begin with... <clears throat> drawing six lines, one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six. These are all added together, just remember that. And we begin with our coefficients, so we'll place the one times, and this is five times, ten times, ten times, five times, and then one times. The first term is 2x, so this starts with 2x to the 5th. This is 2x to the 4th. This is 2x 
to the third. This is 2x to the second. This is 2x to the first. And this is 2x to the zero power. And again, this is times. Uh, this is a negative y. So this is really negative y to the zero. This is negative y to the one. And remember, these are all multiplied. This is negative y to the second times negative y to the third times negative y to the fourth. And lastly, times negative y to the fifth. And at this point, we would then uh, obviously collapse these and we would end up with a final answer of basically 32x to the fifth. This would end up being a negative, so minus um, 80. Be careful with the negatives because that could trip you up and cause you to get a wrong answer quickly. Um, and so I know that this is definitely going to alternate because of the negative. No, actually, that'll be negative. I almost did it myself just now. Erase that. So this is actually minus 40. X squared Y cubed. All right, and ending with positive 10. X Y to the fourth. And then a minus Y to the fifth. All right. So let me give you a try question on this one. I know you're going to need some time to copy this down as well. So just holler. So we're going to expand in the try question. I will give you a few minutes in class as well. So we could talk about any questions you may have. All right. So that's your expansion. You should end up with x to the fifth remember it's not about the answer it's about how you got to the answer x to the fourth y plus 40 x cubed and then that becomes y to the second minus 80 x squared y to the third this time plus 80 x y to the fourth and you end with minus 32 y to the fifth so that should be your final answer and uh, let's see how you fare on that before we finish today. I have one more example and we're done. That's why you notice I'm not in a hurry. This is only four examples. And this is example four. This is finding a single term. And once you practice these in the homework, you're going to notice that you're going to get really fast at this. Right now, you're just learning it from the ground up, and it's going to start to marinate quick. All right. And you guys are smart, so you guys are going to get this right away. Notice the question. Pay attention to the question. So the first thing we're going to focus on is find... the fourth term in the expansion
and it's 3x plus 2y, and that's raised to the seventh. We want the fourth term. Okay, so here's what we know. We already know that we have on the fifth, we have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's the fifth power. Sixth power is going to be 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. The seventh is going to be 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 terms. So we want the fourth term. So if I draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lines, I know that the term I'm focused on is this one. And I already know its coefficient. I also already know that the fourth term, the first term, the 3x, starts at the seventh power here, and it jumps down 7, 6, 5. Here it's a 4 times the, the second term, which is the 2y. The 2y starts at 0 and begins 1 and 2, and here it's a 3. So I already know that that fourth term, just the fourth term is all they're asking for, has to be the 35 times uh, 3 to the fourth, which is 81. So I have 35 times 81 x to the fourth times 8 y to the third and that should be approximately only 22,680 and now we just drop the term so basically x to the fourth y to the third all right and that's all they're asking for for the question so the fourth term of 3x plus 2 y to the seventh power has to be 22,680 uh, x to the fourth y to the third All right, and so your try question, and take your time, you ask me what you need, is to find the fifth term. Wow, that's creative. The fifth term in the expansion. And then you're going to give me 2x plus y to the ninth power. All right. And so you can use that. This is a, as a platform to get to 8. So this will be 1, 8, and so on. And then you could do 1, 9, and so on. Find your numbers. You can also use a small calculator if you wish. And you could do the NCR function um, and use that to find the NCR. So let me show you real quick what the NCR looks like. Um, the issue here is you're not allowed to use a T80384 calculator technically. Mm, let's see here. TI, this is my TI plus. Let me see if I can sh uh, find you the, the, the keys. You could actually see what it, those uh, look like and then go from there. It should be pretty easy. In most calculators, you're going to find that NCR is either going to be one of the primary buttons, which is uh, typical of the basic function scientific calculators, or you're going to find um, the NCR combinations right here under probability. If you notice, I went to math and then I went to probability. Here's number three, NCR. So again, math, and go to probability, and then number three. And what you're going to have to do here is, um, I believe you put in your n value first. So let me go back. I'll do an example with you. So let's go to our mode clear. 
All right, and so let's say I want to do this one. Um, let's say I want to do the one we just did, which was uh, 7, 4, right? So I will start with the 7, then go to math, go to probability, go to number 3, and now I put in the 4, and there's my 35. Okay? It usually works like that in the, the scientific calculators as well. All right, let's practice this.